Alex? We're gonna die. We're gonna die. Live from Cyber Monday, it's a special edition of Multimedia Monday with Retro Pals and the Philips CDI. Hey Alex, how you doing? I'm good, I'm good, Danny. Hello CDI, I hope you're doing well. Oh uh, well, <laughs> if you caught the pre-show, the CDI, uh, it has uh, some problems, but uh, yeah, we wouldn't have it any other way, would we? No, no, it's perfect. We love you CDI, just the way you are. It has been such a good long time since we've had an old-fashioned Philips CDI stream full of edutainment, full of multimedia, full of things that educate and confuse and in the end leave you learning uh, less than you learned before you started watching the stream. So get ready to lose some brain cells. I love when my brain cells go away. But you know whose brain cells do not go away are beautiful subscribers. So let me thank some folks. Oh, what a segue. That was a terrible one, but thank you. Thank you, Uzi, 61 month resub. I'm here. Wow, that's a lot of months. I'm here. I'm sick with COVID from my stupid family, but I'm here. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no. That. Get well get soon. Better. Yeah. Hope you feel better. Yeah. Thank you, Sneaker Nets, 41 month resub. 41 months. Holy crap. I've almost paid off this loan. Yeah, one day you will. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Rocket City Rando, five month resub. Do appreciate that. And thank you, Proxy Glitch Cat, 46 months. Holy shit. Cyber Media Monday with corn. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Now with corn. And thank you, Loadrunner 2, 39 month reset. Holy damn, thank you. This is Philip CDI. Get your own. <laughs> thank you so much. Everybody, if you enjoy the games you see today, uh, you're obligated to get your very own Philip CDI. That's right. You have to spend the trouble tracking down one with a working timekeeper chip, one that actually reads discs. You're probably going to have to get it from, like, Norway or some shit. Yeah, you're That's not to, my problem. You're going to actually have to go to Norway. Oh, thank you, Maple Bear, for the 29-month resub. I love Korm. I love Korm, too. I also love Korm. Mm. Korm stands here. Okay, so... Oh, boy. There's been news. There's been developments in the Philips CDI scene. Uh, MAME recently greatly improved its support for the Philips CDI to the point Yay. where a lot of these games actually run better on MAME than they do on my actual Philips CDI unit. <laughs> You'll remember in uh, previous Multimedia Mondays when I try to play games on a real CDI, um, sometimes it works, and then sometimes things just go way, 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 way off the rails. And uh, I was hoping for some better compatibility with MAME, so we shall see. I did put on a, a test game before the stream, and that one looked like glitchy shit, so... Yeah, that was great. Who even knows? Also, I don't have a plan for this stream. We're just going to be looking for the ROM list uh, through MAME, and I'm going to play whatever game sounds good. Surely that'll, nothing can go wrong with that. We will not see any boobs nor butts. I'm positive. Yeah, uh, Danny's taking the control seat for this one, so... Yep, I'm taking uh, point. My God. May God have mercy on our souls for whatever we're about to see. I do know what game we do want to start with, though. This is a game I've actually had in my collection for a while, and I didn't know exactly what it was. Turns out it's a long-lost animation magic game. Featuring uh, animation from the people who did the Zelda CDI games, along with stuff like uh, Mutant Rampage, Body Slam, Pyramid Adventures, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. This may be their most obscure game ever, as far as I know, because no one ever talks about this. Is there a reason? Uh, we're going to find out. Let's see here. Start up the CDI. Search for this. Mm -hmm. Do that. And then this. And then we do uh, this. Hang on. <laughs> I got this. Here. I said, I said here. Oh my god, OBS. OBS is, is betraying me right now. Yaddle, thank you for the 35 months. And thank you, uh, Bioforce Grape, for the 75 bits. <laughs> Excellent username. Mm -hmm. My god, it was working before the show. What is your deal? Yeah, this one. <clears throat> it's thinking about it. OBS does not want to do our dirty work. Mm -mm. 
Oh, she thank you, Cambertian, uh, for the 100 bits. Let's see the eye. The CDI, that is. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. It was literally... <laughs> I didn't restart OBS. It just say... suddenly decided at showtime, oh, no, we're not going to perform. <laughs> yeah, no, it was working. I saw it work. That's pretty cool. All right, I'm going to add another scene. Alex, uh, waste some time. All right, so folks, 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 ask for a demonstration. I do like I do like when OBS is like that, yeah. I was actually having that problem earlier. I was trying to get OBS to capture a screen, and it just decided no. And I was like, please, please do this for me. And I was like, why would I? Why would I ever do that? Yeah. Why would I ever be useful in any capacity? Why would I help? Thank you, Vega Baby. The CDI stable and reliable on hardware or emulated. Yeah, it's like the uh, the CDI curse. It's 10 month reset there. Thank you so much. Yeah, the OBS wants Maplethorpe. It's it's like, God, I need to have it. <laughs> you have as much Maplethorpe as possible. Wait, why isn't it showing the freaking... Wait a second. Hmm. It doesn't even realize this is a real window. <sighs> I think I know how to fix this. Okay, we got this, folks. Folks... Folks, we got this. Alex, tell everybody about your weekend. Well, uh, what did I do this weekend? Oh, um, I watched... Did I watch a movie? No, I played Fortnite. Sorry, folks. That's all I've been doing. But, but y'all be glad to know, guess what level I am on Fortnite? That's right, 134. What the fuck? Yeah, I really like Fortnite. But I don't have enough points yet to get... The cosmic skin of my favorite goth cat. There it is! Wow, what a shame we have to stop talking about Fortnite oh, to play no. full of CDI oh, no. games. Finally, our number's going back up. Okay, yeah, I, I think I just needed to restart MAME. It's always a bunch of fun things. You either restart your computer or restart OBS or restart the CDI or restart MAME. Here's hoping this thing actually works. Because you know what else works? What? The memory works. Oh, no it doesn't. Compact Disc Incorporated. Oh, I love that. That's what I want to be called. Oh my god! Whose brain is this? Whose brain is this? House. Car. Man. Whoa, man. This the is memory amazing. works. Yeah, no, this is great. This is perfect. I told you it was worth this it. interactive program is to help you improve your memory skills for names and faces. The principles used are based on tried and true techniques for improving name face memory. If this is your first time using this program, it is recommended that you begin with the tour bus. Selecting the tour bus provides an overview of the program. Selecting the thinking head provides information about the thinking head. strategies the and thinking techniques head. most effective for you. Selecting the puzzle will tell you more about the unique opportunity to practice your skills. Well, uh, I guess we should start. These are legit uh, art pieces and animations created by Animation Magic. You're going to see the good stuff in a little bit, but let's uh, let's just get an overview of what this disc is. This is a PAL exclusive release, by the way. You got to live in Norway if you want to play this. Ah, damn. Congratulations. You've taken the most important step toward a better memory for names and faces, deciding that you want to improve your skills for remembering people's names and faces. I do. That's right. I do. You have to change the way you deal with this important task. Research shows that you can improve your memory skills for names and faces if you follow some specific rules and then practice, practice, practice. As you will see, the memory works is different from standard programs because in addition to showing you what the best strategies or techniques are and how to use them, the mm -hmm. memory works actually allows you to practice your new skills with real names and faces in the comfort and privacy of your own home and oh. at your own pace. Oh. I don't got to embarrass actually, myself in public. Follow your progress using an easy test method. Soon you'll begin practicing your new skills in real life circumstances. As your skills and confidence grow, You'll know that you're on your way to mastering this important social skill. Lesson one, Mabel nosy nosy. I was going to mention Mabel. If Mabel <laughs> comes up, I refuse. I have a feeling we're going to learn a lot of mnemonics here. So this is a disc about uh, dehumanizing all the people you meet and reducing them to uh, their facial features and also other memorable aspects. The important part is that you know their names. Mm -hmm. 
program offers two options for improving your memory for names and faces. Okay. The name and face mnemonics option involves strategy training that is based upon visual imagery and verbal elaboration. That would be cool if this was a CDI pickup artist disc. <laughs> a mnemonic technique that is based upon a four-step procedure for rehearsing a new acquaintance's name. Both no one with a CDI I can pick up anyone. <laughs> is helpful for improving names. What would those tips memory. be? In fact, it is possible for you to combine Hey babe, I spent over five hundred dollars to watch uh, a unique style of learning. To watch for weddings and the funeral the way it's meant to be seen. Hey baby, I imported an original copy of Pyramid Adventures. What do you think of that? Oh, the, the animation magic game about the, the food pyramid? I'm yours, is what they'll say. So in addition to that, this uh, disc also has skill practice. In order to practice your new skills, the program provides an airport terminal setting in which to meet new acquaintances. There are the best setting. Areas the, I, the terminal, yeah. And in each, you will meet eight new people. This simulation exercise Thank you, no problem. 62 month Risa, proud graduate of Phillips CDI University. Oh man. <laughs> you gotta get you gotta get your debt relief from uh from going there. You gotta apply. Remember people's names and faces. For example, you might imagine that you're a tour guide and have to introduce each person arriving at the airport to his or her buddy on the tour bus. Or you okay. might role play the part of a conference director who must introduce arriving participants to one another. To minimize These are pretty specific. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do any of these things. Want, you don't want to be a conference sure director? Everyone. No. Some of the people will make remarks okay. and others will Fair. simply say their names. Try different strategies in whatever combination is comfortable and works best for you. Select the arrow to begin. Good luck and have fun. Good luck and have fun, GLHF. Got yeah, I, I would be a terrible tour guide as well. I'd be like, uh, hey, look at this. This is visually interesting. This is a museum piece called, uh, uh, look at the plaque. <laughs> well, let's start. Danny Docent. Let's, let's start on our new life uh, that gets better with the Philips CDI Revenant. Thank you for the 37 months. Thank you. Escape from Cyber Monday. <laughs> I wonder if MAME plays Escape from Cyber City. Look at these wow. characters. Who now you like know. Now you know this is an animation magic game. These look like the the overworld sprites on uh, Faces of Evil. <laughs> oh, I love the nerd. This totally looks like Link would walk up and stab him with a sword and they'd be like, "Hey, I'm here to help you." Mm -hmm. I, I say wildly gesticulating. Yeah, you can't see it, but Danny was just really <laughs> turning into a CDI there. Name and face. It oh, did mnemonics. Not say sharks test, folks. This is it says Joe. Okay. Well, that's a pretty easy way to learn someone's name. Just read their name tag. Yeah, don't why need... don't? Why doesn't everyone just wear name tags? I don't need a CDI for that. The salt strategy. <laughs> a lot of people follow that here on Twitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love this music. This is very Weather Channel. It is Weather Channel. I love this. This is your weather on the eights. <laughs> name and face retest. Well, it's uh. Jesus Christ, I don't want to get to know this guy. Can we meet somewhere no, else? No, what's wrong with me? <laughs> this old, decrepit jester. The you most missed. common memory problem oh, is the God. inability to remember people's names. Mm -hmm. You've probably suffered embarrassment from this at one time or another. Or it may have cost you business. When someone forgets our name, intentionally or not, we feel as if they've forgotten us. That's true. We're just fading away. There's no magic solution. But there is an effective method. Research has shown mnemonics to be the most effective device for reliably remembering names and faces together. For research, try watching Johnny Mnemonics. Are devices we use to make a piece of information stick more firmly in our memory. In the strategy I do like Phil's section, face. you'll learn some mnemonics. You want to be buddies with Phil? To remembering yeah. Names and faces. Most people agree. He looks like he's smiling through the pain, and I can respect that. Why do you suppose that is? There are a few reasons. First, mm -hmm. we see faces. We True. usually only hear names. Visual information registers more clearly in our minds than auditory information. There is a little bit of Cam yes. Clark in this guy's voice. Carefully. It's not him, though. Oranges. Aspirin. Typewriter. Spain. Paperclip. Wreath. Mm -hmm. Feather. Now right. Look. Everybody uh, memorized this? What? You were just presented two lists of seven unrelated items. Now, which one was one the murder was weapon? Verbally, the other visually. Now try to recall as many items from each list as you can. Press continue when you're ready. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh... Let's, uh, let's try and remember the, the items. There was, like, a globe and a, a wrench and a... He also said a bunch of different shit that wasn't on the screen, like wreath and he did, uh, yeah. other stuff. They were different lists. Oh, I'm not too committed to learning people's faces and names. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is this is bad business for Twitch. Odds are you remembered more of the pictured items than the spoken ones. Another factor is that remembering faces is a recognition task, whereas remembering names relies on pure recall. Yeah, and this Columbo episode sucks. And one more thing, wreath. Paperclip. Coffee cup. If you knew that the electric fan was not present the first time, you employed recognition. You recognized all seven of the other items from your brief exposure earlier. Mm. Now try again to list the seven items from the spoken list. Press continue when you're done. Wreath. Paperclip. Oh, yeah. Um. Oh, we're going to fail out of face college. That's fine. <laughs> this sucks. In that case, you were employing pure recall. Quite a difference, isn't there? Right, Recalling Spain. Recalling verbal information without using mnemonics is difficult, although it can be done. Mnemonic techniques make the job easier by making the recall task more like a recognition task. Combining verbal and visual information together makes that information stick more firmly in memory. Now that you've had a chance to learn a little about the power of mnemonics, press continue to return to the main menu and begin using these techniques to improve your memory for names and faces. We recommend that each time you use the memory works, begin with the name and face test to see how well you remember names and faces. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Isn't there like a disorder where like you can't recognize the differences in people's faces? Yeah, I, I don't know the name of it, but I, I kind of have that. I'm really face blind. It was it was a plot point in a visual novel I played once. That's oh, all cool. I know about it. <laughs> face blindness, yeah. Yeah, I well, have to look at hair to recognize people. Maybe we can overcome our face blindness thanks to the the Philip CDI. Pro prosopagnosia, aka face blindness. There you go. Okay. Well, it's time to learn. Shark test. This Shark test. Shark test. <laughs> Shark test. Not to spoil shark it, but test. this section is uh, probably what you came to see. All right, let's do the shark test. Sorry. So you're ready to test your memory for names and faces. Good. Would you like to try first names only, last names only, or first and last names together? Please select one. Yeah, let's try just first names. In a moment, okay. several faces will appear on screen. Okay. Move the cursor over each face and press the button. The characters will introduce themselves. You'll okay. have a short time to study them and try to learn the names. Okay. Hi, I'm Rachel. This is Rachel. I'm Brian. This is Brian. I'm Linda. Linda. I'm George. George. I'm George. Why did you say it in Alex's dog voice? <laughs> Hi, I'm Alexandra. Hi, I'm Agnes. Hi, Agnes. Hi, my name's Ken. I'm Stan. <laughs> I'm Stan. Man, a few words. Mm -hmm. Now let's try your memory. You'll need a pencil and paper. Oh. Number your paper one through eight. Oh Everybody do this. Continue when your paper is numbered. Everybody number your paper. Are you done? Okay. Okay. Now write as many of the names as you can remember in your numbered spaces. Please push the continue button when you're done. Two is Stan, three yeah. is Ken, seven is Agnes. Couldn't tell you the rest of them. That's all you got? That's all I got. What about you? Um, I think number four is George, because he said, I'm George. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember George, because <laughs> he had a dog voice. Now let's see how well you did. Give yourself a check for each name you remembered correctly. Okay. Right, there's a Rachel and a Linda. Hi, I'm Alexandra. That's Alexandra. I'm Stan. I got it right. You got Stan. I'm George. That's George. <laughs> I knew him. Which what was the other one you knew? Seven and three. Seven is Agnes. Hi, I'm Agnes. Yeah. She looks like an Agnes. That's how I got Hi, it. Hi, my name's Ken. And, I, don't, and... I don't think that's how they want you to memorize names. <laughs> she looks like an Agnes. She does. That does not qualify as, as a mnemonic, as Alex. A mnemonic. Let's check your score. Please select your score number. Four. You got like a four. Good. You fall within the average range. 
but hey, you were average. satisfied with your own performance. Would you like to try again? No. Fine. Perhaps you're ready to try some strategies. Let's try some strategies. Are you ready for strats? Yes. Oh man. So uh so uh, it's easy to forget this was made by Animation Magic because of all the, the digitized pictures. Mm -hmm. Here's a reminder of who made this. Now let's take a look at a tried and true method of remembering names and faces. There are three basic stages to it. One, locking the face into memory. I keep thinking Two, it's going to get to the good part. The, the game keeps tricking me. <laughs> Sepasai! Sepasai, thank you. 51 months. 51. And having fun. 51 and having fun. Order. But for our purposes, let's start with the face. Are you ready to try? Yeah. It is a little bit like super high impact. Yeah, it's got that uh, that midway sound to it. Since all faces are different, each has something that makes it what? distinctive. Artists who draw caricatures rely on this fact for their livelihood. Study your friends and neighbors. What is it that makes them memorable? Fuck. Sometimes it's an obvious feature, such Sorry as a receding chin, there, but... or maybe a prominent nose. My friend, Big Nose Norman. Oh, no! Danny, you didn't tell me about this! Oh, nose. Let's look at another face. No! I think we'd all agree this gentleman has ample eyebrows. Our technique calls for exaggerating the prominent or distinctive feature in our imaginations. Although it may seem a bit funny and maybe even a little rude, it really works. Watch. <laughs> It is mean and rude, isn't it? Just it is. reducing the people you know to their embarrassing features. <laughs> oh, he's happy about it, though. Now he's not. What the hell? Now try it again in your own mind. Study the face. Exaggerate the brows. Try it for a few seconds. This guy wants to sell Link some lamp oil. Oh my god, Danny! Well, you just locked this face into memory. Remember when doing this by yourself. Always choose a permanent feature. Clothing, jewelry, and makeup, for instance, may change by the next time you see a person. Let's try another one. Yeah, what if you mess up and just call him eyebrows? Image comes to mind when looking at a prominent feature. This woman's bright red hair, for instance, might conjure up the image of fire. Oh, yeah. Oh, God! What? Y this y rocks! Yeah. So again, try it yourself in your own imagination for a few seconds. Imagine her on fire, you freak! See a friend but can't remember her name? Good. Imagine I she's on fire. Forget this face either. Yeah. Remembering a face does us little <laughs> good unless we can supply a name to go with it. So let's talk about names. Fire Franny. Would you like to experiment with another face or two before moving on to this? That's a good way to express that. Would you like to experiment with another couple of faces? <laughs> All right, how about this no. one? What's going to happen to this poor fucker? The feature might be the shape of the face itself. Here we have a gentleman with a long and narrow face. Let's exaggerate that feature. Link, you need the shoes before you can go into the volcano. <laughs> Again, try this it in your own mind. This is messed up, Danny. Do you have blood coming down his, his nose? No, <laughs> that's just more? the little... No. <laughs> What's animation magic doing to this poor guy? Here's another. Do we agree that perhaps I love this her. woman's nose is her most distinctive feature? Let's exaggerate that nose. No! Let's do it. <laughs> That's right, we got furry TF too. To practice in okay. Your own mind, and then we'll move on to our name strategies. Furry TF can work as a, uh, a mnemonic device. Imagine what your friends would look like as a big freakish bird. Let's remember names. That's how I imagine all my coworkers, and that's why I'm Okay, now let's talk about remembering names. Most people agree that remembering names is more difficult than remembering faces. Why do you suppose that is? There are a few reasons. First, we see faces. We usually only hear names. I say there's too many names out there. Information registers more clearly in Gotta get rid of a few thousand of them. Auditory information. We should all be named Terry. Frequently, I agree. Recall failure results from a lack of attention or failure to properly store the information in the first place. The first habit you must develop, then, is to be extremely attentive when being introduced. 
Handle all introductions as if they were vitally important to you. <laughs> Sign your friend's own, personas. Don't quite get the name the first time. Ask the person to repeat it. What? Now rehearse the name a few times so that it registers in your short-term memory. The next step is to make the name meaningful. Smile and Phyllis Constantino. difficult to remember because they themselves don't carry much meaning. Phyllis CDI. Is where mnemonics comes in handy. Yes, Seth, Let's take yes. this lady's name. Phyllis Constantino. What associations can we draw with this name to give it meaning? Constantino. Any ideas? How about a concertina? I was thinking concert piano. Like, because her teeth are really big. Like, skip. concert piano. Ooh, that's good. Only like, like the keys of a piano. That's name. really mean, but... Others, only the first. But let's assume in this case that we need to remember the full name. So how about the first name, Phyllis? Any associations come to mind? One possibility would be the phrase, Phil His. Now we what? have Phil His Concertina. Can we make a I'm sorry? out of that? Here's one option. Can we make this less sexual, please? Can I said less Don't sexual. Like your mental picture is strange or nonsensical. <laughs> Studies indicate that bizarre or outlandish images are actually easier to remember than conventional ones. Mine was better. Is to find a way to connect the Phil image Phyllis to the concertina face. concert piano. How about we fill a concertina with gasoline, you fucking maniac? Okay. Distinctive feature of the face. Here, her smile makes a good target. Yeah. Perhaps we could see her smile as a concertina. <laughs> Oh, I don't like that. Oh, why'd you put gas in it? It's okay, she's fine. Try to include motion in your image. It will be more vivid. Now the final step. Review it. Make the image stick. It generally takes several seconds of concentrated effort. No, no, mine is better. You're playing memory. her teeth like a concert <laughs> piano. <laughs> like, you've seen you're Daffy Duck with piano key teeth, teeth, right? Yeah. It's normal. And tried and true it's not techniques. filling a concertina with gas. Still it's a tried and true technique. Oh my god, you know what he looks like? As in dollar bill, duck's bill, what? or uh, water bill. He's from the Dover case, Boys. His nose is wide and prominent. <laughs> Let's choose a duck's bill. Look! All right, this guy's a duck. He's not too happy about it. If he had a hooked nose, we might make it a hawk's bill. The name Fawcett also contains a built-in association. Now let's see if we can combine these two images. Ah, Phil Toilet Duck. What? Why are we... Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what a hand looks like. Okay. All that remains now is to link the image to the face. Imagine filling a duck's bill with gasoline. <laughs> that turnaround! Now study it for a few seconds to register it in memory. Would you like to try another? <laughs> I'm really scared to click yes, but... We but have to see but it we again. have to. We we have to. In some situations, oh, Miss Coburn, flee, flee while you have the chance. Let's take Miss Coburn. Does she have a distinctive feature? She's got flowing hair, so I guess we're yeah, gonna see her hair burning. Possibilities. So let's work with the name. Like Burn two people co-burning it. Perhaps we could try Colburn. No. Does she not have a first name? Colburn, back to the face. Let's try this. Yeah, apply some Colburns to her. F Sucks. You bring light to my lair. <laughs> I mean, I certainly won't forget that. Friendly social gatherings and family events, for instance, where remembering a first name is all that is required. This one shouldn't be too difficult. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Cliff. Ah, uh, my man, Cliff. Ah. <sighs> I'm sorry about all the body horror, guys. I know it's a little early in the day for that kind of thing. Yes, it's Hapty Head. Would you like another example? God, it is Hapty Head. But why? Yes, I do. Oh boy, this poor fucker. Here's one. Did you see the orc? Did you hear the orchestra hit when he blinked? Think yeah. About it for a moment. Good. Bart Einstein is what I see. One possibility for the last name. Eisenstein 
would be the sound-alike phrase, eyes in Stein. You may notice that our subject has unusually thick glasses. What if we look through a pair of glass-bottomed beer steins? What if? Thank you, Eltriok. 42-month well, resub. Always happy to see a Monday pal stream. They're always the most delightfully unhinged. You don't think this is unhinged? This is an unhinged. Come on. This is normal. <laughs> Thank you, though. Thank you. How about bird? Let's look at our face again and see if we can make a connection. What is this guy wearing? Yeah, what is he wearing? He looks like he's from David Lynch's Dune. He's pieced together a bunch of towels and what? fabric. Aha. Uh -huh. Happy Thanksgiving. The object here is not to flatter our subject, but to remember him. <laughs> this parrot <heart. laughs> He's gonna have to scrub all the floors in Hyrule. Take a moment, review the picture. Really think about it. Really imagine a turkey with beer steins. Now, before we return to our menu, would you like to review the faces we've met so far and see if you can remember their names? Yeah. Phyllis Concertina full of gasoline. Yeah, Phyllis Concertina. Tino. Oh, that was close. That was close. Uh, Bill... Bill Fawcett. Bill the, Fawcett. The awful man. My God, it's working. Is I this really a works. strategy? Uh, Miss Colburn, and I won't forget that. Nope. That horrible animation. I'm never going to forget that. So all you need to do is install an animation magic in, uh, employee in your head, and you can remember names. That's Cliff. This is Cliff Boy. It's just Cliff. <laughs> Bert Eisenstein. Bert? Burn? Bert? Bert. Okay. Man, you're doing great. Again, the methodology I, works. They talk about the cop in your head. You I have an animation magic uh, animator in my head. Or try a every time, That's I terrifying. See, every like time I see mind. your face, it horribly morphs. <laughs> Please don't. Can you imagine all your friends? You're just like staring at their faces, trying to remember their names, and you're just inadvertently reacting with horror what you've seen on this disc. <laughs> so you're just like, birds. hey there, uh, oh, ooh, mm. <laughs> Phyllis. It's Phyllis. Let's do let's do more name tricks. A great many names have built-in meanings to make them easy to remember. Let's look at some examples. A name bacon? might sound exactly like an object. C Here kite? We have bacon, lake, kite, ball, and page. Is that the European spelling? Another common meaning for names. Baker, king, carpenter, tailor, and cook are some. Many names call up for I hope we places. see the baker and the Wonder. king from Faces Central, of Evil. Mm -hmm. Holland, St. Martin, Hampshire. Animals can impart ready meaning to a name. Deer, wolf, fox, dolphin, fish. Plant meanings are common as well. Rose, lemon, maples. How many people you know with the last name Dolphin? <laughs> just a few examples. Hello, I'm John Hello. Dolphin. I'm Dolphin. Easy visual associations. Kraft, Kellogg. I'm Kraft Kingsley, Cheese Dolphin. Ford, Reynolds, verbs, gamble, fry, trot, love, profit, and there are many other such categories. Names that are also compound words call up instant images, as in Butterfield, Goodman, Ironstone, Greenwood, and Armstrong. For names without obvious meanings, we must use substitute words, as we did earlier with concertina for consentino. Mm. Let's try some more ways to do that. Must Cordoza we though? Cardoza might be Cardozer. Heifetz, Cardoza. High Fence. Dahlgren, Dahlgren. Fleming, Flamy. Or Ludwig. <laughs> All Flemings are Flaming. Flamy. Sorry for name is longer. Fleming. You really want to just say your longer? friend is Flaming? <laughs> you might want to practice with names from your phone book. Even in a case where you can't practice come up with, with an your phone book. Name, That's you sick. To find That's sicko behavior. Be enough to make the name stick in your memory. All right, open up uh, page 397 of your phone book and start studying. <laughs> well, now we know all the tips and tricks remembering people's names. Let's, uh, you know what? Let's do a let's do the salt strategy. Salt, salt, salt. <laughs> Mr. You Echo find the Dolphin. Name and imagery exercise too cumbersome. Perhaps you're in a situation where using such an intensive method might seem impractical. Perhaps you're wondering what any of this has to do with SALT. The word SALT is an acronym, a mnemonic, if you will, for study, ask, leave, 
Test. Salt is a simple technique for remembering names. It is particularly useful in loosely structured social situations. Study ask. Such as parties or conferences, where one can move about at will. Salt is based on... Oh, man, we're at a, a nice cold beer. We're at a party now. If we allow ourselves to is this the animation magic studio? Face. That's why step one is study. Study the person first. Imagine you're at a party where you don't know any of the guests. Who's the tiny woman they've pinned on the wall? Learning as many names as you can. Don't worry about me. Study What's her name? Is for 30 seconds or a uh, Mabel. After you feel familiar with these guests, move the cursor over one or more of their faces and press the button. This is step two. I love that. Yes. I love that guy on the side. Go ahead and try. Mm, since we're here, let's go ahead and ask. You look yeah, like a smart business, business person. Boy. Here's my card. The name's Roger Hunter. Hey, don't try to mnemonic me. That's terrifying. You don't want to be mnemonic? I'm I'm hereby forbidding all chat members from mnemonicing my name. All right, one second, folks. Hi, I gotta let the cat I'm Jack out. Jeff Martin. This is Jeff Martin. Hey, Jeff. That's Tess the cat. You know she's Tess because she always wants in and out of the room whenever we're recording a retro pal stream. Danny nosy nosy. Can't talk now, darling. Wonderful to meet you. Absolutely fabulous. I'm sure you know that I'm Cassandra Nicolette. Ciao. She was really chatty. Alex, put in your headphones. Okay, you gotta, gotta you gotta hear to this. this one. Can't talk now, darling. Wonderful to meet you. Absolutely fabulous. I'm sure you know that I'm Cassandra Nicolette. Ciao. That's totally voice acting from yes. fucking CDI Zelda. Heather Foster, the pleasure's all mine. I don't know if I like Heather Foster. Do we have to talk to her? Let's, okay. let's go back to the so, other boys. So can, I, can I tell you my mnemonics? I have a couple. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Okay, Heather Foster, her hair is feathered. So, Feather Foster, and also Foster is like Australian for beer, so I'm just imagining she's Australian. Mm. So, Heather Foster, I could see her and I'm like, oh, her feathered hair. <laughs> yeah. Heather Foster. Australian for uh, hair. Use Roger this as Hunter. an opportunity to practice the name it's airtight. a few times. Say the name to yourself, wait a while, then repeat it until you feel you've got it. Periodically rehearsing a person's name will make it far easier to remember the next time you meet. Which brings us to the last step. Test. Test yourself. Return to your new acquaintances and give their names a try. Let's test, uh, this is Cassandra? Mm hmm Can't talk now, darling. Wonderful to meet you. Absolutely fabulous. Just tell me your name. I'm sure you know that I'm Cassandra Nicolette. Ciao. I was right. So remember, that's salt. When Study, do we pour salt on them? Ask. Leave. They're not slugs. Test. Would you like to try it again? I would like to leave the test, yes. Eh, eh. There. The simulation. Welcome to the simulation. Here you'll have an opportunity to practice the name and face memory methods you've just learned. We've Hi, we work security at the gift shop. We're here to beat your ass today. <laughs> under one roof. We saw you trying to steal one of you our stone wizards. The terminal by clicking on the right or left arrows. Study the faces for as long as you wish. Characters will introduce themselves if you place the cursor over them and press the button. Good luck. Go to a party and salt the earth as you leave it behind you. <laughs> I'm Adam Phillips. I'm in the travel business. Gotta go. <laughs> All right, well, we won't see much of him, so don't bother see? learning his name. Hey, I remember you from... Uh, uh, weren't you at the... Uh, I'm Bert Alfredson. I'm Bert Alfredson. I'm Louise Holstein. Yes, THE Louise Holstein. Have you seen any good films? How mysterious. Wow, what a power play, introducing <laughs> yourself like that. Yes, I'm THE Danny RetroPal. <laughs> Have you seen any good uh, films? Did this woman know she was having her picture taken? It's me. It's Ippolito. Carla Ippolito. Forget it. You'll never get it right. No one does. Okay. Wow, Carla. Not gonna try. <laughs> I love him. 
if you had to guess this guy's name, uh, what would that name be? Roger Griff. Hey, pal, Skippy here. Skippy De La Rosa. You take care now. <laughs> Skippy De La Rosa. He looks like a, I, he I looks like a Skippy. I could have guessed a thousand names, and I would have never guessed Skippy De La Rosa. <laughs> I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Sheila Connors. <laughs> Ian Bannister, sales. Hey, are you going to the Regent Hotel? Why do you ask? You wanna you wanna hook up later? Oh, hello, we finally meet. Wonderful. I'm Julie Butterfield. What was your name again? I'm uh uh, uh, Danny Saltfield. Julie Butterfield. Here we're meeting some people at the terminal. This is a classic, uh, <laughs> this is a classic conversation you have in the United States. You just walk up to people at the airport and you're like, what's your name? Harvey Jankowski, Investments. You wouldn't have a dollar I could borrow for the vending machine. Sounds like he's not a very good investor. I'm Laura Fleming. I want you to write it down. I want you to call me. Okay. We we have a girlfriend. It finally worked. It's <laughs> it's it, Boomhauer was right. The Boomhauer method works. Just talk to enough women and one of them is going to agree to to sleep with you. I mean, yeah. Long time no see. Remember me? Kelly Monroe. Kelly. <laughs> hey. <laughs> did they tell any of these people when they were about to take the picture? <laughs> or did they just go like, okay, we're taking the picture in five, four, click. Newhouse. Corey Newhouse. Software, hardware, ready to wear, you name it. Newhouse. This guy is going to prison. <laughs> I don't know, hey, that guy fault. rocks. My friends say I'm always in one. <laughs> Arthur Fogg. My friends say I'm always in one. Arthur Fogg. Why can't I find a decent Jewish deli around here? Take my name down, Paula Grossman. Call me if you find a decent Jewish deli. Did we have to give all these people cartoon voices? We could have just let them talk. They're, you already have their likenesses. Hey, I love them. I think this is just Alex. That's me. Hey, Todd Dooley. Later. Yep. Man, a few now words. Time to talk. Hi, Cheryl Kaufman's the name. What did you think of the conference? High priced Sominex, if you ask me. But at least I caught up on my beauty sleep. You're telling me. Conferences are a big waste of time. Let's go back to my hotel room with uh, me and Julie. Howard Gate 14. I want to get out of here. My name is Howard Gate 14. This place has really gone downhill. Tony Carsonaro. What happened to this place? Are you responsible? It's an airport. What do you. Oh, the wings are falling off. They're leaking gasoline. This place is a shithole. I'll call you and we'll talk. This week isn't good. Don Diorio. D I O R I O. Diorio. Like Dio. Like uh, Rainbow in the Dark. Hey, it's me, Sharon Davis. Hey! House Tricks. Good. House Sharon. Tricks. That needs to make a comeback. I a agree. As small talk, just go like, hey, uh, how's tricks? Uh, I'm Howard Wakefield. We have serious matters to discuss. We need to go somewhere where we can talk privately. You could be in big trouble. Uh, wait! <laughs> Hold. No, you're being cruised, honey. Either I'm being cruised or there's a developing story in the background that I don't really want to be a part of. I, no, I want to know, know, know more about him. I'm Abigail Sachs. Let's swap email addresses. Dan Danny's gonna get laid. I'm gonna get laid a lot at the airport. It's truly a pleasure to finally make your acquaintance. I'm Bruce Hartwood. Jeff Northrop. I'm a consultant. Here's my card. Give me a call. Dude, we're getting so many people's phone numbers. <laughs> As a bisexual CDI fan, we're, your, we're your scoring tonight. Nancy Norville. I spell it N-O-R-B-I-L-L-E. 
Can you say it without the southern accent? <laughs> no way. That makes it a little more difficult. Audrey Betancourt, if you need to know. I'm from New York. I don't have time for small talk. Call me, we'll fax. Yes, I want to fax her. We've gotten fax numbers. We've gotten email addresses. We've gotten phone numbers, business cards. We are in the cyber future. This is how you, this is how you meet people in the cyber future. I don't know how many examples of these they have. There's just, it just keeps on going. See, what I want people to do is I oh want Oh my god, I love him! I want people to take these sound clips and I want them to animate Philip's CDI cutscenes around them. <laughs> Thank you, Maple Bear, for the 100 bits. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that. <laughs> just make sure to stand out as much as possible in the, the bathroom. I bet that's the next scene we go to the bathroom. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Fred Hicks, that's me. Fred I love Hicks? Fred. That's me. Oh, this is Shelley Duvall. Oh, hello. I never forget a face, but name, boy, oh boy. Mine's Marilyn Chapman. Boy, oh boy. Hello, um, that is hi. Louise Gilmartin, nice weather. I'm not much good at small talk. Louise Humanoid. <laughs> I'm normal, don't worry. <laughs> Really? <laughs> I don't think you got this lady's permission to put, what about the other guy? To put her him. face in your game. He I... looks like one of those sad clowns on a 70s black velvet, you wow. know? Doesn't you're... he look like, a, the, like just... a red skeleton clown? You just own the shit out of this guy. I'm sorry. And you're about to forget his name. No time right now. Baldwin, Monica, have your people fax my people. Oh, we can't fax her directly. It has to be through people. <laughs> Uh, here's my card, Rick Studman. Rick Studman. You are not. I love her. I'm Allison Dewhurst of the Southampton Dewhurst. It's a pleasure. Oh, the Southampton Dewhurst. The Southampton Dewhurst. She's she's moneyed. Oliver Bancroft, career counselor. I tell him get a job. <laughs> There's so many good voice clips in this. Mitch Coppinger. I'm in the phone book. Don't be a stranger. Coppinger with a G. I'm in the phone book. I'm going to have to remember that when someone asks my phone number and I don't want to tell them. I'll just be like, uh, look in the phone book. It's in there somewhere. Here's my card. Janet. The last name is Archer now. I'm married. Oh, well. Mm, mixed messages. But, uh... Thank you, Fidget. 42 month resub. I hate this so much. Thank you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> This is an actual game on CDI, but only in Europe, so that's why no one's seen it. All right, let's let's retest and then finish this thing up. Yeah, it's an open marriage. Now you have a chance to try our test again. This time, though, try using some of the strategies you've learned. Would you like to use first names only, last names only, or first and last names together? I think we're ready for both. Remember to try the techniques you've just learned. Press continue when you're done. I'm Kevin Witham. I'm Louis Toscano. Hello, I'm Sam French. I'm Chelsea Brandt. <laughs> She's out of breath. Hello, my name is Daphne Gill. I'm Ralph Horton. I'm from the 70s. Hi, I'm Colleen Hannigan. I'm Rob Hansen. Okay, we got all these. Mm -hmm. As before, number of piece of paper one through eight. When the faces reappear, write the names as you recall them next to the appropriate number. Press continue when you're ready. So we got uh, Rob Birdface. We have Joe Face on Fire. We have uh, Cliff uh, Ugly Guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good at mnemonics, I'm sorry. Yeah, I... Press continue when you're done. I forgot all their names. For the sake of argument, let's say we got a perfect score. I got cool. Sam French. Now let's see how well you did. Give yourself a check for each name you remembered correctly. You did all of them. It's great. I'm Louis Toscano. Yeah, we got him. We got everyone. We're perfect. Now mm -hmm. tally your score. We hope you did better than last time, but this is, after all, only an exercise. The true test will come when you begin applying the strategies in real-life situations. 
Only then will you know if the memory works. Oh. Oh. That's it. That's the end of the lesson. That's what you get for a $50 CDI game in Norway that they made like 15 copies of. <laughs> this apparently came with an accessory? My copy is incomplete somehow. I, I don't know what that is. It, maybe it's like a chart full of like horrifying bird people faces. Who even knows? But that's the memory works for Philips CDI. The forgotten animation magic game. I'm so glad it had those animations in there. Those are like... It's seriously like lost cutscenes from the Wand of Gamelon. Yeah, they're so good. Oh. <sighs> and now we know all people's faces and can remember all their names perfectly. You're welcome, everybody. You're welcome. What else are we going to learn today? You know what? Mm -hmm. I want to get self-indulgent. Okay, what are we doing? There's a game we've played a couple of times called Do You Remember the 60s? <laughs> yes, yes, yes! We've played this on original hardware, at which point it crashed. We've uh, we tried various other things in which it crashed. One of the world's foremost CDI collectors literally sent me an original copy of Do You Remember the 60s, hoping it would work on my console. It crashed. It crashed in the exact same way. Will it work if there is not the possibility of dirty disc errors? What if it was all digital? What if it was perfectly emulated in MAME? Chad's already revving up Peter Sellers for us. They can't just put Peter Sellers on here. They gotta... <laughs> we're gonna either see the actual game or it's not gonna work. It's gonna be one of those two things. No, we do need a Peter Sellers emote. I agree. I just want to see an error screen without Peter Sellers on it. He always shows up every single time. <laughs> I hope we get some original content from this. Do you remember the 60s? Let's go. Let's remember the 60s together. Fucking hell. <laughs> there he is. Did you expect anything? What can you say, but Lamau? <laughs> Did you, could you have expected what anything else? What can you say, but Lamau? And God damn it. How, how? This is a different error message, because MAME doesn't uh, support the digital video cartridge, and yet, and yet, they keep Peter Sellers on there. <laughs> That is the face of a of a crashed Philips CDI, as far as I'm concerned. It's oh, official now. So MAME doesn't do the video cartridge yet? It does not, unfortunately. Oh, that's a shame. The uh, non-digital video cartridge games tend to work pretty well, um, but uh, those tend not to load at all. Boy, so many possibilities. Beauty and the Beast, Breast Self-Examination, Brian Adams. They got so much stuff in here, dude. They really do. Do I have Caesar's World of Boxing? It says I don't. Well. Let's see. Let's give her a shot. This is one I wanted to play, but unfortunately I only had uh, Caesar's World of Gambling. This is supposed to be a, a classic for Philips CDI. This is what they used to sell the system on those infomercials they used to do. Peter Sellers, breast examination. Oh, God. Well, it booted. Oh, this also needs the freaking digital video cartridge. Sorry, honey. Hell. Hell, I say. Okay, I need to think of a game that doesn't have video cartridge as a Chad requirement. Chad is clamoring for breast self-examination, but I don't know if we can show are that. Are you sure we want to torpedo our stream at no, 2 o'clock no. on a Monday? <laughs> at did least we do the home shopping thing? I think that requires a... I think we did, too. Yeah, okay. Did we fish, do fish TV? Fish TV sounds like it also might be a, a digital video cartridge thing. Well, let's, yeah. go ahead, let's go ahead and find out. Yeah, when MAME starts supporting the digital video cartridge, it's over. Oh, it's everyone. all over. It is all over. I yep. think that wants a digital video cartridge, too, yeah. <laughs> Knob Interactive. <laughs> the Brits are having a larf over this one. God. Okay, so we were at least able to do the faces. Now, there are plenty of CDI games mm -hmm. that don't use the digital video cartridge. I just have to actually find one. Getting ahead, making time. Oh, 
How do we get ahead in this fast-paced world? Uh, we make time for it. Okay. Do we make time with a digital video cartridge? We better not. Please. We're just poor CDI owners who couldn't afford a digital video cartridge. Do we not deserve software too? Looks great! Welcome to Getting Ahead, the series of interactive picture discs designed to support you on the path to personal development. Yep, Face Kitchen works in MAME if anyone wants to try that out. That is a free nightmare for anyone. This has Robert Maplethorpe syndrome. It has that same glitchiness. Yeah. In the style of a phone-in. You will hear callers ask a series of questions about the key aspects of time management, which our studio panel will answer. Okay. I'm Beth Thomas, and I'm here to give you the basic guidelines for managing your time. Beth, your camera's kind of fucked up. are our two experts. Rudy Lucier and Michael Cooper. This is they will be answering your questions in more detail. What what can you say? I now, love the ghost. Their spirits are escaping about? their bodies. Well, first of all, it's about analyzing the way you spend your life, at work and outside work. From this analysis, you can then work out a more effective way to organize your time. Mm. But to be truly effective, you should look at the whole picture and not just at your immediate problems. Rudy? Thank you, Beth. Yeah, there we're looking at the fourth dimension right now. Choose from and this is 4D thinking. Time. There are also many time management tools and techniques, particularly in the professional areas. But what we haven't got are magic formulas. Mm. You have to choose from the advice we give you, whatever seems right for your needs. Thank you, Rudy. As I said, time management is not just about work. This show it's sucks. I hope it gets canceled. <laughs> Michael? Thank you, Beth. And it's a big subject that we're tackling here. This one that like can change your life. That would be on That's Saturday why you should look at the whole like picture. And you knew it was time Think to about like how your work play. fits yeah, in the rest right of Yeah, right after the cartoons, they put this on. You'd like it to be. You turn to the other channel and, oh, it's saved by the bell. I don't care. The program. Theme chooser. Uh, uh, yes. Okay, try the following section. I'm Beth Thomas, and in this section, we will be highlighting the dangers of the traps you may fall into. <laughs> We're discussing people's obsessions with time. There's traps? When obsessions Look become chronic, they're like diseases, Beth. And as what? with diseases, the best solution is prevention. <laughs> and to prevent them, you must recognize the symptoms. Well, we're going to tell you. Saint Aspartame, thank, thank you for the 21 months. I don't know what you've tuned into either. Is from Tim. This is the worst call-in show ever. I wonder, could you elaborate <laughs> on what you <laughs> Okay. Firstly, I should explain that people often get tripped up by the solutions that they've set in motion. <laughs> they become time obsessed, and this could lead to one of. This is a Tim and Eric bit. He's seeing in uh, 3D, 4D, 3D, 3. These are workaholism. Planaholism and clockaholism. Hey, of you can't talk about my clockaholism. Don't talk about my clock like that. With talking about doing things, but in keep fact, my clock's name out of your mouth. <laughs> Fuck it. Him? Fuck all this. Well, Fuck it. A workaholic, <laughs> That's me. People who don't show the commitment that I do. That may be Tim, but it doesn't always follow that a workaholic is a good worker. They may be just obsessed. In fact, they often get in the way of other workers, interfere around the office, and trust no one else. They can be very disruptive. Oh, you think they're good workers, but they're actually the making other workers also worse. A very dangerous situation. A stealing you should little test them and trick them. Their home lives, their leisure hours, Set traps the for them. Things that allow them a more detached view of life. May turn the office into the elf sets. They're too. constantly you falling in a pit. Out of <laughs> delegation. Well, it's not so much bad. It's just that I've seen the alternative. Well, it's not so bad falling into the planner vortex. It's a nice place. His life is just a mass of planning. Nothing gets done but the planning. Well, that could be because they're suffering from planner holism, and that can be just as serious. Anyone hear of planner holism? I had that. Yes. When someone does nothing in their lives except 
plan what and how they intend to do things, but never actually do them, they have taken the whole theory of time management too far. Have you called it planoholism, though? And their goals. Isn't it just like no not doing something anything. right? Because I, I have that issue where I'll plan itself. something and then I, I won't do it. But to keep on improving but... on a plan, remember that no plan is perfect, and it's better to implement a fair plan in time than a brilliant plan too late. All right, we're all planaholics. Okay. You know exactly when these things have gone too far, when one of these poor creatures starts planning things that can't and shouldn't be planned for. One of these poor creatures. A poor these, creature! These humans. Continue. They plan their time. I'm sick of it. I'm so above it all. These guys are aliens. Business aliens. <laughs> the worst kind. Well, Tim... Time management is I think the ghost imagery really adds to this picture. Mania. It's like the ghosts of your family are chasing you and you have to jump over that. clocks. It may be important, but maybe not that important. He got the salary man zoomies. Yeah. These people can often be found in large corporations, and they don't realize that time management is based on flexibility. It is one thing to be serious about... Oh, it's not letting me skip this. Sorry, honey. You gotta listen. To listen. I'm just waiting for the next completely unhinged piece of imagery here. Remember that working to a clock means that you're not likely to give your best to something. A clockaholic needs to relax and enjoy what they're doing. All right, how many minutes we got left in this stream, Alex? Clockaholics uh, are a one-way ticket to frustration. The 55. You really need to overcome your clock obsession. Regimented way, but they can't force the client to show up on time. And they can cut the meeting short to finish on time, but it may not achieve anything. Let's face it, the world is constantly ready to trip them up. I want to play time management track and field, yeah. It's got the hurdles and everything. I want to do the uh, time management shot put. Or you throw a clock. Uh, my husband was going to phone you. He's at home having a day off and I'm at work, but he usually doesn't seem to have got round to it. If he's watching this, could you give him some advice on his procrastination? It's a terrible problem. <laughs> this guy's kicking back with a beer and his wife calls in and he's a, she's all like, he's a Firstly, big procrastinator. Can no you get him off his ass and do something? My husband sucks ass. Can you fix this? I'm just trying to kick back and watch the telly. But once they get started... I'm trying to get away from my life. And my wife is calling up the, the Philips CDI to tell her tell him about my problems. There is only one cure for procrastination. Don't Death. do it. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, fine. <laughs> Looking at it from his point of view, it may be that there are things for which the right time never seems to arrive, or else not enough of the right time. These excuses become a form of self-deception, and it's hard to break away from this trap. But here's my tip. I do something else to force me to get started, like mm -hmm. starting with an aspect of the job that I like most. This way, I gain the momentum to finish at least the most enjoyable parts. I don't like streaming CDI games, but I do like sorting the ISOs. Something I just find fascinating about extracting the uh, CHD files in MAME, <laughs> which stands for compressed hard drive, did you know? Did you have to do that? Yeah. I'm sorry. Time and you, work time, time wasters, time tools, time obsessions. We have time for one of these. Which, which would it, will it be, uh, Alex? Time obsessions. I'm Beth Thomas. I think this is the one we've seen. Oh, boo! Screw that then. You're just obsessed with time. <laughs> what a strange distance is. It feels like a... I wonder, how do you elaborate on what... It feels really accusatory, too. Like you've done something wrong if you have to watch this disc and you're being punished. Making time for Philip CDI. Are you making time? I'm making time. I love the ghosting effect. I really wish all uh, video games had that. Yeah, that should be standard. It was nice of MAME to, to implement that. I want something really unhinged. You want something, you want something real wacky? I'm going to go looking through this list. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see just the word help and then a bunch of language. Help! Oplading! Oh my god, there's like 20 consonants in that word. We gotta play this. Yeah, it's gotta be good. What did I choose? That was a different... What am I doing? Help! I may have doomed us all. Let's find out. 
Oh, oh. no, it's Dutch for breast examination. No, no. <laughs> what if it is? It's Dutch for the game doesn't freaking work. That's a first. Usually MAME at least tries to make them work. Well, we'll never find out what that mysterious 20 consonant game is. Oh yeah, you can't see that. This has to be a surprise. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. How can we CD this eye? Alex, if you were to pick one of these French karaoke discs, which one would you pick? Top Club. Top Club? I want to hear some club hits. All right, club hits from the France in the 1980s and 1990s. Let's go. This has got to be good. It's got to be. Wow, looks great. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We put all our money into licensing this music. And zero money into the <laughs> the graphical effects. <laughs> I'm Mikey the Microphone. Better talk to me in French. Or I won't uh, I won't even recognize you. Which one of these songs should we play, Alex? Uh we should do New York, New York. Let's hear it in French. Da Start spreading the news. I'm leaving. Is this actually? It's not spreading the news. What? It doesn't have the. I'm leaving today. There's supposed to be a backing track. I wanna be a part of it. New York, New York. These vagabond shoes. That's me. Are longing to stare. <laughs> I'm gonna start clicking buttons. And step around the heart of it. New York, New York. I wanna wake up in the city that doesn't sleep. Oh! To find I'm king of the hill. The music's, the music's in the other speaker. Keep going, Alex. My little town blues. Little town blues. Are melting away. They're melting away. I'll make a brand, brand new start of it. In old New York. York. I thought this was French. If I can make it there, I'd make it anywhere. It's up to you. New York, a New, New York. Excellent. <laughs> what Why are these? Did I sing? What are these other songs? Let's let's hear this one. As long as we're getting DMCA'd, it's an adaptation of "You Can't Hurry Love." Yes. I'm walking on sunshine. Oh wait. My sis, loin, loin, you need. I don't know French. I really can't do this. I don't know what any of this has to do with the thing. I like the guy in the background. He's just hanging out, doing what he wants. I'm cutting you off, Alex. I don't know how to do that. I can't. I can't stand this. There's so many of these. There's a whole bunch of French exclusive CDI karaoke discs. I'm gonna have to explore more of those. The French classic, New York, New York. We love it. How to photograph nature. International Tennis Open. Jazz Giants. Jazz wow. Giants. Karaoke Classics. Male Standards. Greatest Love Duets. Mm -hmm. Family Favorites. Let's do Love Duets. Fuck it. Love Duets. Oh boy. Disaster. We're going to go to zero viewers here in a second. The second we start singing like uh, 
that fucking share song. What's that one about uh, putting your little hand in mine? And then something, that's, something. Uh, that's Prince. No, that's that's Sunny and Cher. Okay. Whatever. It's probably. Oh, not oh, on here. oh! I got you, babe. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I was gonna say the Groundhog Day song. All right. Don't you dare! Don't you dare perform this. <laughs> Alex? <laughs> this rocks. You gotta do it in English, but I love it that I have the Italiano option. Do we do we get to sing with the monkey at least? Oh god. I saw Islands in the Stream. You wanna sing that one? Yeah. I don't know that one. Uh do you wanna choose you can choose one. You don't have to do Islands in the Stream. I don't really care. Okay. <laughs> Oh, it's a it's a gib joint. This is a freaking uh, what's his face that that band. What you know. is this art? Baby, when I met you, there was peace unknown. I set out to get you with, with a, a fine tooth, tooth comb. comb. It was soft inside. There was something going on. Is this Game of Thrones? You do some, you do something to me. I forgot the song and I can't explain. <laughs> You're the one who wouldn't sing it. Hold me closer, and, and I, I feel, feel no pain. pain. Every beat of my heart, we got something going on. I don't know what the scoop's like. What's going on? Tender love is blind. It requires a dedication. All the love we feel needs no conversation. Ride it together. <laughs> Making love with each other. Ha -ha. Islands in the stream. That is what we are. No one in between. How can we be wrong? Sail away with me to another world. And we rely on each other. Uh -oh. Okay, that's good enough. We don't good need song. any more of that. Let's go back to the song list. Oh, God. I want to... Okay, I think, I think I've made my decision. Oh, boy. Okay. I know this one, so that'll be good. All right, sing it. Okay. Knocked out music. I've had the time of my life in the 20s. Now I've had the time of my life. No, I never felt like this before. Oh, I swear it's the truth. And I owe it all to you. Because I had the time of my life. And I owe it all to you. What's happening here? Strife. Strife. Yeah, they're dueling. <laughs> There's a duel in the street. So long. Now I finally found someone to shoot my duel. <laughs> they had to call the police. Look at this. It was a real big scene. <laughs> as we felt this magical fantasy. Now with passion in our eyes There's no way we can disguise Our, our secret, secret need, need To duel So, so we, we take, take each, each other's, other's hand, hand As we seem to understand The urgency Just remember I'm quitting this Okay. I'm calling this Alright, you don't like this great uh, public domain art? I like the art I think there's just so many more karaoke discs we can get to i want to cover at least one game in every karaoke series and good news there's like 20 different series of karaoke discs oh thank goodness let's try something this sounds dangerous kirschbuch gesundheit okay does anyone know what that means does it mean uh boobs and more boobs because if it does uh, i'm not gonna take it 
side means, and that doesn't mean boobs. Let's find out. <clears throat> I should start turning these down in advance because they're all super loud. Granted, they've earned it because they're Philips CDI games. Mm -hmm. I've had the time of my life with the Philips CDI. Germans do say boobs when you sneeze. Okay. Oh, we're learning okay. stuff I today. I, we're learning all about German culture. Good boobs to you, sir. <laughs> it's breast examination German. That's actually going to happen. One of these discs is legit going to be... There's a fund? How do we get that? Wait a minute. What? Das Kursbuch Gesundheit will Ihnen helfen, Gesundheitsprobleme rechtzeitig zu erkennen die und um die Funktionen Ihres Körpers besser zu verstehen. <laughs> Danny! <laughs> All right. Next game. Freaking Germany. I'm blaming y'all for this. Should have been it in a should have put it in a language where what I actually knew. Been? I don't know. What was it? He was just holding his head in the We'll never know. Sudden. We'll never know. We'll never have know. Have you had the time of your life, Jordan? Because I'm not. We're going to the number factory. No. The nice chaste, non nudity filled number factory. Alright, here's number eight. If you put it on its side, it looks like a pair of boobs. It was something Gesundheit was the name of the game. <laughs> I thought Everyone I... looked away and they're just like, no, what I miss? Well, you it's... You missed you didn't miss nothing. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It was just another uh, karaoke. We disc. made so many jokes about what it was gonna be. Ha ha ha. Freaking CDI. Freaking Germans. You can't get horny at the number factory. It's against the law. Oh, what a logo. Nice. This doesn't even use the digital video cartridge. Um. Alex! We're gonna die. We're gonna die! Welcome to the number factory. Kidnapped! 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 work here. They spend their time dying numbers. <laughs> Your job is to help them die as many numbers as you can. There are five rooms you can visit in the factory, with a different activity to do in each one. And there's a place to go if you need help or find something difficult. That's called tricks of the trade. <laughs> you can always leave a room by moving your pointer to the top of the screen. I think I need then help. The control panel mm -hmm. will appear. Click on the menu button to leave the room and go to another one. When Let's kidnap some numbers. Activity. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. This activity helps you practice your skills as a detective. A rogue scrubbit will steal a number from the dying machine. He won't give it back until you've worked out which number it is. You'll only get three clues. To get a clue, click on the clue button. Did he say a rogue scrubbit? You may need to use all three clues to find the number. When you think you know which number's been kidnapped, use the number panel to enter it and press go. The game is against the clock, so don't make wild guesses. After okay. five numbers, You'll be taken to the packing department to see your score. <laughs> I think I said they were gonna like take us to the pack. What is that? Oh, that must be the scrub. Unless you work out which number it is, if you can. He stole our number. Okay. Clue. Nine minus this number equals five. Oh, I give up. <laughs> he gave up quickly. That was, that was good. All right, you got me. I'm pretty sure this is British. I'm going to guess it without the clue. Check okay. this out. Nine. Before you guess. Clue first. I don't want to hear the clue. Before you guess. Ah, fine. It's an even number. That's not it. I think I just made the CDI mad by claiming mm -hmm. that 
the zero is an even number. Before you guess. But it's between sixty and seventy. Sixty-eight. No. I. Oh, fine. It's in four. The game's not talking to me anymore. 64. It's upset. It's gotta be sixty-four. There you go. Game's giving me the silent treatment now. Uzi, please don't watch this if it's making your COVID worse. <laughs> this is like would not recommend watching a deranged <laughs> Philip CDI stream while you have COVID. <laughs> Man, I pissed off the game and now it's not talking to me anymore. I liked you, Number Factory. Don't don't do this to me. Don't make me play the German nudity game. Come on, I wanted to play something normal. <laughs> All right, fine. The thing I'm not telling you is that there's seriously a few hundred games in this list. Yeah, there are so many games here. We could be doing this forever. 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 There's like a game about jazz. There's a game about Jeopardy. We'll play Jeopardy. Sure, that actually probably won't have nudity, right? Oh, right? <laughs> well. Right? Right, 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 right. Please, please. This is Nude Jeopardy. Why were they just naked? Germans! <laughs> Doo -doo -doo. That was a classic uh, love ballad duet. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, get amped. Amp. Oh, fancy. This is Jeopardy! Ooh. Is it him? Now, entering the studio is the host of Jeopardy, Alex Rebecca. What? Oh my god! He disappeared. Where'd you go, Alex? Alex! Alex! Thank you, uh Charlie O'Donnell. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Jeopardy. If you already know the rules, select the number of players. For game rules, select help. <laughs> whoa, um, whoa, whoa! Please select the number of players. We've been we've been taken to the glitch zone. The Jeopardy glitch zone. Here's how you play. Jeopardy, of course, is played with uh, six Who is categories. Peter Sellers? Each category has five clues. The higher the dollar value. Uh huh. If you know the rules, please select the number of players. This one. Okay, go ahead and select a name. This one. Select the first letter of your name, or highlight the first letter of. Uh huh. Yep. To see more names, press. Yep. To use no name, select no none. Now, if your names are right, select play game. If not. Are we in hell? I think we are. Cool. Let's begin the Jeopardy round. Hey, so I got the Jeopardy. Hey. In this round of play. Here are the categories. Wild West. Mm hmm. Vocabulary. Design, mm -hmm. lyricists, mythology, and ancient history. <laughs> poops in a racing game. Let's put the I hate when games German. trick you like that. Player one, make your first selection. I will take lyricists for 100, Alex. Your clue is, he collaborated with Court Vile, Harold Arlen, and other composers after the death of his brother George. No idea. Out of time, sorry. This was the right question. Who is Ira Gershwin? Wouldn't have known. Oh, yeah, Ira Gershwin. Player one. How are you going to play it? Select. Fuck it, lyricist for 500 For $500, this male singer wrote the lyrics for the Oscar-winning song Evergreen. Uh. Sorry, time's up. You should have said, who is Paul Williams? I should have said that. Player one. How are you going to play it? Vocabulary 500. Just fuck me up, Alex. The clue is a daily double. Ooh. Ooh. Player one. You have no money, but in the Jeopardy round, as you know, you may still wager up to $500. Five. As you know, two? you may wager two. any okay. or all of your money on a daily double. 
you may wager up to five hundred dollars in jeopardy or one thousand Exit means you end the game. Are you but, sure you want to do no, so? No, 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 no. Twenty. Two, two. Yeah. Remember, the minimum wager is one hundred dollars. Oh, for fuck's sake! The wager screen works just like a. Ca we did it. Here We're is in. Your daily double clue. The mistress of a chateau, or an ornamental chain she might wear. Uh. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be difficult. <laughs> it's... <laughs> what are you trying to say about me? I'm ignorant. I'm indicted. Uh, that would be an uh, IBM. Nope. We were looking for... What is a Chatelaine? Hmm, of course. Oh, of course. Thank you Player for the bits one. cart, man. How are you going to play it? Select. Yeah. <laughs> I can't... This this menu is very inoperable in this version of MAME. I guess I'm just making a list of games that I have to play on real hardware now. So Jeopardy's one of them. Looks pretty good, if you could actually see it and you weren't trapped in the hell dimension. I don't really like being trapped in the hell dimension, personally. Yeah, me either. I prefer not to. Jigsaw. The ultimate electronic challenge. Think it's a Jigsaw puzzle game? I hope or so. do you think it's like based on the film Saw? Please be something normal. Don't let it be jigsaw puzzles full of naked people. That's all I want. Boobs. You know it's what? You're gonna, cursing yourself. It's not going to be new jigsaw. New jigsaw. <laughs> you, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Straight from Norway, it's new jigsaw. Bring back AOL Instant Messenger. I thought this would be safer than doing like a uh, randomly picked PC98 stream, but... <laughs> no. <laughs> no, this is just as dangerous. That's normal. Britannica! You know they're not going to put any boobs in this. Yeah, that's the Britannica promise. Mm -hmm. Ding. Donk. Teach me. Teach me. What are Welcome puzzle pieces? Jigsaw, the ultimate electronic puzzle. Command strip. These electronic instructions are divided into six sections. Command strip. I don't like Each the sound of that. Each section tells you about one part of Jigsaw. If this... We just slapped him. <laughs> Once you have chosen a picture, Jigsaw breaks it up into pieces using mm -hmm. one of 12 different patterns. When you first start Jigsaw, one of the 12 patterns is randomly chosen for you. If you want a different pattern... Point at the select pattern box and press the action button. Now you will see the pattern selectors. I know about all this. We know jigsaw puzzles. Let's just see what the actual puzzles are. It's probably nothing but normal stuff. See normal. Cartoons. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. I want to play a puzzle. What are these fucked up puzzle pieces? I like it. Bro, what is this? <laughs> Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, no, I like that. <laughs> it's a nightmare Hellraiser puzzle. Let's start. What is happening in that picture? What is uh, happening in uh, that picture? It's, uh... <clears throat> oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, thank you. Oh, and IRL for the sub 18 months in a row. Are the weasel and the monkey going to kiss? Yes, they are going to kiss a lot. We did it. Monkeys and weasels feel free to kiss. Love wins here on Retro Pals. Don't I love the glitch that. art that shows up during the, the fades. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at some of the other pictures and then I think we'll move on. Oh, there's motion puzzles. These all look like nightmares to me, Alex. I want to see. I want to see that. I want to see the tuba guy. Oh, 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 oh man! Oh man! Do you want to select a different one? <sighs> Jesus! Jesus! No one wants this. I quit. I quit. You're done. Okay. Yeah. I want to see some of the motion puzzles though. You think these are taken from other CDI games? Do you think these were drawn by Animation Magic? 
It kind of looks like they, them. It, it does look like animation magic. It looks like CDI's own internal, like CDI Kids, uh, Rolo, whatever team. You know what I mean? I do know. Yeah. Now, is it actually going to be in motion while we play the game? Because that would be impressive. It's not. It's bullshit is what it is. That's bullshit, Philip CDI. Don't think I don't think that that's bullshit. Yeah, that's not. Maybe it, it's only in motion at the end. Wait, that was from Cartoon Jukebox. Yeah, that's where I recognize it Okay. From. Yeah, these are taken from other CDI games. Interesting. There's a shared Philip CDI multiverse. We're finally unraveling the secrets. I'm just going to scroll the end of this ROM list and see if we see anything good. All right, what we got? What's Zenith? Please be careful. I see Euro, and I'm just like... Zenith, Euro. All right, you Euros, keep it in your pants for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's uh, about TVs, because that was a popular brand back then. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Is this a Super Tramp song? <laughs> this does look like the TV. That's a TV logo. It is, isn't it? Okay. Where are we going? Yeah. Huh? One player. That's good. We click this. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, level level one, great. Good music. This is totally sampled from something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, a drum solo introduces us. Whoa. Alex, this is a game. Yeah, we found one. Wrong choice, though. Okay. This is a... Uh, we played this on Amiga once. There was yeah. an Amiga game like this, but without the parallax. Yeah, I can see the resemblance to Bound High. Yeah, and after you beat the level, you get full frontal nudity. Danny, please. The rumors said that the Philips CDI was a game system, and we found one of them. Only in Europe, this is Zenith. As far as CDI games go, this is pretty good, actually. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> it's creative. It's not like anything else. It's got a sense of depth to it, of all things. I like this. This even plays nice with a mouse. We're making the wrong choice constantly, though. Which yeah, isn't surprising, good. considering this is Multimedia Monday. Ooh, this looks dangerous. Careful. This looks really dangerous. Danny, this is sick. <laughs> That was that was the guitar opening to uh, When Doves Cry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. This kicks ass. Oh my god. No, I want to play um let's do let's do a a different level. What's this? It's got the cool S down there. Oh, it does. And now there's guts. I like the guts. The guts are acid, sweetie. I see. Why is the music so good in this? Danny! Bam! Bonk. We found the guts in the overhead view ball bouncing game. I 
I want to see the the hardest that this game has to offer. Oh, it won't let you pick the higher bull, levels. Bull, bull, that's awful. That's bullshit. Just when I finally found a game. Well, we'll find out which songs these are sampled from when we're uh, DMCA claimed for the stream. Oh yeah, when we finally upload it. All right, speed run time. Okay, go, Danny, go. Holy fuck! There we go. Oh shit. The acid! I thought that was a good run. Zenith for Philips CDI. I like it. I think we discovered a new Philips CDI game. <laughs> we dug one up on the expedition, found some worthless dinosaur bones, and next to those were unreleased CDI games. I like the end of the ROM list. Let's start there. Yeah, what? If you were to pick one of these titles uh, in this series, Alex, which one would it be? Uh, at the Movies. At the Movies? This one? Or do uh -huh. you want it in German? No, I want it in English. Okay. Tim and Bear at the Movies. What kind of adventures will Tim and Bear get up to? Hopefully not naked adventures. Please be normal. Please be for children. Yeah, we, it's okay. We didn't pick the German version. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Seen a little bit of everything today. We saw. <laughs> I love it. Tim and Bear at the movies. That's Tim. And that's, and that's Bear. Bear. Do you even know anything about these guys? Are they popular figures in Europe? Let's just let's click this. Oh man, it's video optimized to be played on a CDI. Tim and Bear have come back from their visit with Uncle Bob and Cousin Tina. This is so German looking. Oh, God, it's over, isn't it? Yes. No, everything so ordinary again. <laughs> now they have to find the bus that will take them home. You wait here, Bear, okay? I'll go and have a look. We're gonna meet up with Phyllis Concertina. No, he's not here yet. Uh-huh. Everything go all right with that boat? Yes, oh no, Bear's arriving. gonna pick up the nuclear yeah. detonation codes by accident. Yeah, that. Oh. oh no, you can't be serious. Yes, but... Yes, but... Thank you, Carmen, for the 100 bits. It that is unbearable. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in a hurry. Thank you. This looks amazing. There's so few games that have uh, animated artwork that's been redrawn and recolored to fit the CDI's. Uh, no, wait! Don't do that! Please wait! <laughs> the CDI's limitations. No! <laughs> this game rocks. What are you doing with Bear? <laughs> yeah, there's probably drugs in the suitcase. Hell, who do you um, want to follow, Tim or Bear? Click on your choice. This is a choose your own adventure game. Fuck yeah. Are we following Tim or Bear? Um, chat Tim or Bear. Put one hey, for Tim, two for stop. Wait, we don't get a chance. Would you please come back? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, choice is an illusion on CDI. That car, they've taken my suitcase and Bear. This one's theirs. What? The thieves? Let's follow them. Jump on the back. Go. Let's freaking go. Let's get our bear back. He's very slowly getting away. I can't see it anymore. This has Wonder Dog for Sega CD energy. It does. It's real Wonder Dog core. Stupid. They almost no, killed a child. There they are. Oh, that baby's stupid. I mean, babies are infamously stupid. <laughs> stupid baby. We're losing them. Green, green, green. Every frame of this is a painting. Is this supposed to take place in America, you think? Is this LA? Uh, I want to. Yes, this is Hollywood. They're in Hollywood because they're tourists 
and they uh they must be here go somewhere i can't go any further i'll go and look around here thanks for your help you really can cycle fast my pleasure what's your name anyway tim and you my name's tom tim and tom, wow. tim and tom. on the trail of bear Jensen. The film star all right then i'm off bye they're British, but in America, the or whatever. But if he knows where Bear is, no, laddie. Just leave that suitcase with me, and then you'll have to ask somebody over there. This is going to be some search. Perhaps someone there has seen Bear. Hey, it's Who Frankenstein. Have a look? I know him. I beat him in Castlevania. There's a lot of Frankenstein's. This game rocks. This is so good. <laughs> it was worth the search. Yeah, later on they replaced Bear with Eric. It was a much more successful show. What Tim and Bear don't know is that they're at a film studio. A screen test has just begun. <laughs> I like the short King Frankenstein. I do too. And who are you? Tim. Tim, you don't have an appointment. What are you doing here? I'm looking for Bear. Has he been here by any chance? We found no. it. We found Cookie's Bustle and too. He's not on this list. Frankenstein was the creator, not the monster. It's a common misconception held by truly stupid people. <laughs> Would the next candidate please come this way? I love these Frankenstein. Chair uncomfortable for Frankenstein. That is a CDI animated Frankenstein right there. Excuse me, Mel. Huh? Uh, excuse me. Have you seen Tim around? Tim? Yes, indeed, I've seen him. He went over there, I believe, that way. I think these are actual Frankensteins, not act, not people dressed up as them. They did a call. You know, there's. We don't talk about it a lot, but there's a lot of Frankensteins Tim and Bear in the world. Are quite close together. Tim Only or Bear, Alex? See each other. Bear. Who would you like to go along with? Let's follow Bear. Yeah. Yeah, Bear can talk. He's sentient. Thank you so much, Apps Nerdity, for the raid. Hey, welcome, everybody. We're playing Tim and Bear at the movies for Philip CDI, a How game that everyone knows and Tim loves. Mm -mm. What were you up to? I hope you were having fun. I hope you were playing CDI both. games. You like that. And meantime, Corian, I'm thank you for the 25 bits. Thank you. Maybe he's got my suitcase Okay, with him. so these are all originally Dutch games, and they're all CDI exclusive, save for uh, Tim and Bear at the airport. Here we're following a pair of friends, Tim and Bear, uh, bye -bye. as they explore a movie set. Ralph and Bear are going to look at locations. <laughs> Those are places where scenes are filmed that can't be made in the studio, at the sea, for example, or in the city. This game is giving a lot of info about how films are made. They do do screen tests, location tests, yeah. This looks like LA to me. Mm -hmm. Combination of super rich- I love that rich... rusted shitty car. It's... Everything all right? Yep. You won't forget the rubbish bin now, will you? See for yourself. Okay, I guess I'm not needed. Bye. Take Bear off into the country. I'm gonna find him a nice farm to live on. This radio station sucks, I'm sorry. Now where are we? The desert, the California desert. Or not Sperry Farm, I can't tell. Are we gonna get disappeared? Look at this shitty car with all the trash in it. This, I love is, this, car. this is the town with no name, yeah. Give me a drink, bear tender. Yeah, it's pretty close right back. in terms of being America. You don't often see depictions of shitty cars that are just full of garbage. I love that. <laughs> that's though. very that's very realistic. Oh, 
Oh, what's this? Area 51. What? It is! Do I have to censor this one? You want to come inside? <laughs> this is Dutch. Oh. Huh? Hooray! Is it going to fly now? Uh, What's this? Huh? I've got a bear in frame. Huh? How in heaven's huh? name did he get here? Huh? Get him out huh? of here now! Hurry up, Blinker. We have a scene to shoot. But, but I just found true love. You have to go. Bye-bye. That's so sad! Oh, poor bear. Goodbye. We just found the robot bear of our dreams. Sorry. God, that car! I'm sorry! Color scheme just now is very evocative. I'll take you, back. you can tell how sad he was. Danny, why does this rock? This is the best game I've ever seen. This is the best game we played today. Bye, man. Bye. This was worth all those karaoke discs. Mm -hmm. This is worth hearing us sing. Mm. Uh. Mm. What shall Bear investigate now? The green What's in guy. those cans, or what kind of animal that is? <laughs> What's in Pick those cans? What is that animal? Well, let's see what kind of animal this is. Let's follow the Grinch. That's me. Oh, Very you're nice. not real at all. Hello, little one. Want to get out of your suit as well? But where's the zip <laughs> on yours? But I'm Bear! Oh dear me, are there bears here too? That's dangerous. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Bye, bear. My name's Teddy. There's a hot anime boy inside me. <laughs> there are a lot of strange clothes here. Shall I give you a costume as well? This is something Chuba yeah. would draw. <laughs> you look a bit like Max Jansen, the film star. Did you know that? Oh, really? Are you going to get warts now, too? I certainly hope not. This is bad enough, wouldn't you say? He has three fingers. Look, aren't you finished fiddling about with me yet? One moment. All right, sir. You may go. Every frame a painting. Yes. That was really Max Jansen. The famous film star? Mm-hmm. Come, take a seat. Are you gonna make me look old and ill too, with scars and things? <laughs> oh. I think you're quite <laughs> handsome the way you are. Oh. <laughs> oh. That should do. Oh. <laughs> That's it. Hmm. Bye, Bear. Bye. Looking good, Bear. Looking good. Attention. Will Tim and Bear please come to Studio Three? Three. Huh? What's that one poster? Ah! <laughs> it's like a YouTube thumbnail. It's a new emote right there. He walks bravely into the hall. As he reaches the door, he creeps along the wall. You must be careful, it's dangerous. These Hollywood types are very nice to this uh, <laughs> ambulatory cartoon bear. They've probably seen the other things. He gives the door a quiet push. Has he given himself away? No. No one comes outside. 
Quickly. Inside. Perhaps it's not too late. Quickly, bear. Quickly. I think bear is a sentient plush and not an actual, like, living bear bear, but... I think that's what it is, yeah. Near the window. I still say it's a Teddy situation from uh, Persona 4. He's gonna take off his head and he's gonna be secretly beautiful. Hey, hello! Uh, hello! Uh, could you tell me where Studio 3 is? Yes, just go to the left there and you can't miss it. Oh, could also be a Cookie Blair situation, yeah. Where it's actually a small child who just envisions themselves as a bear. Good faces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love the default strut that they both have. I know, right? They're slowly Tim! strolling. They're kings. Tim! Timmy! Timmy! Timothy! Timber! I'm also getting Bart the General vibes from this. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> yeah, it's vaguely creepy. <laughs> Don't put your mouth on it. <laughs> That's the one who kidnapped me in his car. <laughs> how do you do? <laughs> mistake, Tim. My name is John. I'm the producer here. But tell me, how did you find us so soon? Well, thanks for kidnapping my Tim friend. Tim tells them about his adventure, and John learns that his suitcase is back. Say, boys, how would you like to be in a real film with us? What? Oh, oh. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy, Papa Papu, that'd be great. <laughs> Bear. Here's Peter, the director. He'll tell you what you have to do. Right. There are two actors here, and then suddenly two um, individuals come walking past. Oh, that'll be you two. Uh, uh, it's just like a comic book. Uh, these are the actors. Well, I mean, the actors will be sitting on this spot later. And this is where you go. Get in. Past, okay. <laughs> okay. The director Keep rehearses line. with Tim and Bear. They yes, practice right. what they'll have to do during the scene. Okay. Could Max and Alice come in, please? Huh? Oh. <laughs> She's got the strut, too. I love the strut. Mm. Oh. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Bear's asexual. Except for uh, robot bears. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Yes. Robosexual. The famous film star. Wow. Regular. Wow. Quiet on the set. Who, who drew her? Camera. She's from a different game. <laughs> they had five seconds to draw her. Tobor, scene 1800, take one. Action. Ah, uh, quick. <laughs> Take the Tobor to the Tower Ing San. Yeah, great framing, huh? It's the Toa Ing Son. Take the Tobor to the Toa Ing Son. Once again, camera's rolling. Tobor, scene 1800, take two. Scene 1800. This movie must suck. Uh, quick. Take the Tobor to. Uh, ah! Toying son. <laughs> Difficult, isn't it? Who invents these ridiculous names? It's impossible to remember. Once again. Tobor, scene 1800, take three. Action! Quickly, take the uh, stone away. Got! Uh, enough for now. This sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad they drew everyone with the strut. <laughs> we were good, weren't we? We were, yeah. And I thought he was the best. Lunch is served. Mm. 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 This is film too. Let's go and eat. That's disturbing. You with me? Oh, you don't like it? No. Like <laughs> no, stop okay. it. Yes. yes. No. Okay, I'll go to the production office. What shall they do? Go and eat, or go to the production office? Production office! Production office! Alright. We're skipping lunch. We're all business, baby. Good strut. His strut looks more labored than everyone else's. He needs a cane. 
In the production office, everyone's very busy. Everything that it's going to be so hard picking a thumbnail for this episode. Here. Look, Bear, this looks just like Big John. It does. Look at that. Don't they look funny? That's from an old film. Back then, there wasn't any sound. Pretty easy. Then you didn't have to know your lines. But Charlie Chaplin had it easy. To have a dog tomorrow. <laughs> That's the point. Yes, we had that one, but then she suddenly had puppies. No, it really does have to swim. Yeah, we found the magical halfway point between a children's book and an oh, animation magic sir. game. And did they do all right? Yeah. They did. Come on, boys, let's go. Yes, Mr. Lieberman. I'll just ask, Mr. Lieberman. Just a moment, please. Peter, the backer wants to know whether you're on schedule. Oh, Bah. Do my very best. Oh, tell him he can blow his nose on his money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. He's on schedule, Mr. Lieberman. <laughs> you mean me mix for CDI. <laughs> Where's the gay unicorns? Hi. Hi. Uh. <laughs> what a scene. What a scene. Wow. Holy shit. Holy shit. The meal break is always important. The cook thinks up something tasty every day, and all kinds of people meet in the canteen. Sausage, <laughs> apple, and Yummy. goo. Sausage and beans. Ooh. Oh, beans. Enjoy your meal, boys. Those Can don't look like beans. You like. Don't eat those beans. Mm -hmm. No. It's fine. It's mm -hmm. normal. Good, isn't it? Ew. I was hungry. Hey, why are you sitting alone? Yes, alone. Always alone. All alone. I'm the star. And they all think I can do it alone. Oh. But... I cannot do it alone. And I don't have the courage to tell them. But Max, I'm here now. And I can help, can't I? Mm -hmm. Would you do that for me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Bear helps the famous the film star learn his sun. lines. And soon Take things are going much sun. better. Take the turbo to the towing sun. Isn't Bear here? Bear, are you there? I have to go now, Max. Thank you. You're a real friend. Come on, boys. Bear's a real friend. He's a real friend. I wish I had a friend like Bear. Just a little small sentient plush who's like, Oh, I love beans and sausage. Who's willing to barge into your trailer and help you learn your lines. Mm -hmm. Everyone has eaten and he's back on the set. Now they're going to try to shoot that difficult scene again. This is seconds away from becoming a Bob Nemi Mimi segment off of uh, <laughs> Pop Team Epic. If the art was just a little bit worse. Everyone in position. Quiet on the set. Tobor, scene 1800, take 31. <laughs> Action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quickly, take the Tobor to the... Toying the sun before it's too late. Wow. Well, that's now the acting. Scene's going well. Beautiful. No one makes any mistakes. God! Extraordinary. Whoa. You can't stop oh, thinking about it. I'll shake your Thanks for that. After the shoot, the film is sent to the laboratory to be developed I could draw and this. <laughs> the scene right here, That's I could draw this. Tim yeah. Like as well. I've seen you draw this. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how long this is. Do you think it's like 12 hours long? I hope so. We're going to be here a while. Hmm? <clears throat> 
Hey, boys, you coming with me? Are you going to go discovering with Bear, or are you going with Tim and Peter? Click on your choice. Will it be Alex? Uh, Tim and Peter, what are they gonna do? Okay. Let's see what they're up to. Yeah, just put the film on the floor, it's fine. What? No! That's a fire hazard! Clean that up! He does have a nice bounce when he walks. What the hell are they editing? I'm gonna use the second take and cut. That's the one without that bear. <laughs> They're filming the wand of gamma. One second. The line is lamp oil, rope, bombs, you want it. It's not a not a tough line. Uh, now seeing uh, uh, 1681, let's have a look. Oh, you, you think you could hand me that reel? Uh, number 30. Uh, be careful now. Yeah, no digital here. They gotta splice the film themselves. God, I love uh, that. Tim, you uh, fuck up! Tim? Oh, no. Please. Oh, jeez! Oh, well, I should have warned you. It happens to me sometimes, too. Hey, Jeremy, could you reel that film again, please? Let's do another one. Come on, Tim. Looks this like that one's lost it. media. <laughs> Into the trash this goes. Goodbye, movies. Goodbye, <laughs> 16 months of production. <laughs> Don't laugh at him! He's injured himself because of your tomfoolery. It's no laughing matter, Tim. At least the Tim cut. Is Tim going to help Jeremy, or is he going to go with Bear? Click I, on your choice. Help Jeremy. We is gotta your, help Jeremy. We got ourselves into this. Bear, you just stay there, locked away forever. Yeah, you stay in the. Uh, hey, what happened? This looks like a problem. What are you doing? I'm choosing the good scenes and gluing them <laughs> together. Face. Tim's face. Each scene begins with a sign, then I know exactly where to cut. Anyone know where we can see Tobor nowadays? Is that on Netflix? <laughs> Ugh, what a pain in the ass. I love this guy. Yeah. Hmm. And what kind of machine is this? I didn't see you come in. What do you want? Oh, sorry. I can change the color from the film like this. You want to have a go? It was a bishy bashi controller. Mm -hmm. Is that how they do it? Yeah, make it look like I a Sega like CD this game. One best. Yes, maybe you're right. Now I'm going to find Bear. Bye. Bye, son. What's those posters? I'm just gonna say, that guy only had an earring on his right ear. I know, I know, I know, I love him. But to be fair, you can't portray Hollywood without someone being gay. That's just inaccurate and rude, honestly. Tim! And did you see a bit of film? Yes, I was a blue bear, and you were purple. Sounds normal. It's fine. I'm gonna be walking like this the rest of the day. I hope you hope you know, Alex. Okay, you're just gonna slowly meander. Yeah, I'm just gonna slowly strut everywhere I need to go. Hey, I think we did it. Did we do it? Did we reunite Tim and Bear? Did we get Tobor made on time? Once the film is finished, it's shown in the cinema for the first time with an audience. We're at the premiere. The premiere, and that's a big party. Now that's a big party. <laughs> and Tim and Bear have received a very special invitation. <laughs> Look at them, they got the red carpet treatment. <laughs> and we have more struts.
I want to see more Dutch CDI games, I've decided. Okay. Let's start filtering these by a uh, country of origin. Let's go ahead and filter out Germany, just for our yeah, own safety. Yeah, just for safety sake. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice curtain animation. A premiere like this is very exciting. Tobor! Tobor. like the film? <laughs> this movie rules. Five bats popcorn. And a little uh, pirate ship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There they are. There they are. It's true, Exit 7 was also Dutch, so I'm even more interested. the magic of the movies. That as, was wonderful. As featured by Tim and Bear at the movies. What a delightful series this is. I'm uh, I'm pleased to note that there's more than one of these games, so you will see more of Tim and Bear in the future. Oh good, I'm so excited. What kind of hijinks will they get up to? What kind of uh, movies are they going to mess up? How many times are they going to strut across the screen very slowly? That remains to be seen. If what else is on this on disc? And Bear, the program begins. Oh. If you... It's telling me how to use the disc. Okay. And this is probably like a coloring book? Yep. Oh, oh yeah, the Frankensteins! Frankenstein. So many memories. Then they drove Bear out to the desert. Oh yeah, and then the weird, uh, the weird, the weird robot girl. Mm-hmm. I like this too. This was a good one. This was great. What a good little CDI game this was. <laughs> Just hiding in a directory full of identically named games, occasional German porn, and uh, just overall weirdness. <laughs> For the sake of keeping our Twitch channel, that was not porn. Yeah, that no, was, it was, it was that was quote unquote non-sexual nudity. Surprise non-sexual nudity, I should note. Can we just, is this just like an animatic for the whole show? Well, we're done here with Tim and Bear. Good work, everyone. Good work. Good concept. Good design. Ronnie, Eric. We have to we have to use mnemonics to remember all their names. Okay, Remco. That's like Chemco. It was a health encyclopedia. That's what that was. Uh, that's why they had to get naked. <laughs> no. I'm not sure how to describe what we just showed during the show. It was a real mishmash of stuff. Yeah, it was. It was a lot. Karaoke discs, mm -hmm. interactive adventures for children. Yeah, I had to sing. Unexplored German territory. Mm -hmm. And Alex sang. Yeah, it's not something I usually do. A little bit of everything here on this Cyber Monday, on Retro Pals. Hope we've all talked you into buying a CDI of your own. Hope you can find uh, some Cyber Monday deals at your local Norway dealership. <laughs> Special thanks to Nob. Thanks, Nob. Valkyster Multimedia has a studio to watch. Phillips, you did good. You did good. Oh yeah, and we tried to remember the 60s, but Peter Sellers prevented us once again. I like that he will always stop us. <laughs> he always watches over us. Tim and Bear has a registered trademark of Tim and Bear. Wow. I feel like we've learned something today. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we learned. Uh, we learned how to put faces to names. We learned how to uh, explore Hollywood as a pair of... Uh, <laughs> as, as, a, as a bear and a child. Mm -hmm. Man, we just went all over the place today. In any case, thank you for watching. This thank has been you. a special Cyber Monday edition of Retro Pals. Gonna try and do more of these multimedia Monday sessions. I might uh, 
I might have to screen some of these games beforehand. You think? Or you have think? a plan in mind. I was just hoping to have a nice little roulette-style stream, but there's just that occasional danger of there being a uh, an educational disc that's a little bit too educational, if you know what I mean. In any case, uh, we b we'll be back Wednesday with what our patrons voted to see. And what they wanted to see was the PlayStation Adventure game, RMJ, The Mystery Hospital. Oh, cool. So look forward to a full playthrough of that. That is from System Satcom. It's a mansion-like. It's a Souls-like. It's a game where you explore a hospital, and there's all kinds of weird shit that happens. So Hell please yeah. look forward to that. Alex, uh, wrap us up. I'm going to look for a raid target. We're also on, pa as Danny said, we're on Patreon. Patreon.com slash RetroPals. If you like what you see, you can pitch in five bucks a month and you get to vote on what we play every Wednesday, including this Wednesday where you voted for the RMJ Hospital. So definitely uh, check us out there if you'd like to support us there. We're also on YouTube, youtube.com slash RetroPals. We post highlights of our streams there, including our latest one, which is a look at Castlevania Symphony of the Night for the Gamecom, which is, uh, which is a real wild one. If you ever wanted to see like how could they turn Symphony of the Night into anything playable on the game comp check it out it's an unreleased game really interesting we also have a discord if you'd like to keep up with us there let me just put the link in you can chat about games uh media and of course cats we love your cats please show us your cats yes please cats 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 we are all about that cat content and thank you for the 25 bits query and yeah that creepypasta version of jeopardy huh that was normal. <laughs> oh yeah that too i almost forgot about that what a what a journey you always have with the philips cdi mm -hmm. just it was it was a journey of the unexpected in so many possible ways. Oh man, I have a rare opportunity to raid Barley Bap here, so let's go ahead and do that. Cool, cool. Barley Bap often plays uh, untranslated Japanese RPGs, including like uh, Tengai Makyo and things like that. Today she's taking it easy with a game that people have actually heard of. This is Metroid Prime. You heard of this one, Alex? Oh yeah, Metroid Prime. Yeah, yeah. She's uh, she's overseas, so we don't get much chance to to raid her. So let's do that. Go say hi, go have a good rest of your day, and uh, we'll see you later. Thanks for watching. See ya, folks.